In this video, we assume you have bought a UBOS box kit based on the Raspberry Pi and we will uh, put it together to see how easy or maybe hard, but I don't think so, it is to uh, assemble the kit. Here on the table, there are the things that uh, you should have received in your box, uh, minus the flower pots. Uh, they are not part of uh, the product, but we have a Raspberry Pi. We have a power supply for the Raspberry Pi. We have the enclosure and some extra boards. We have a solid state uh, drive. There's a UBOS sticker on it, which means that there's actually software on it already. This is also why uh, what you receive uh, will have the seal uh, open. Uh, that's not because uh, something nefarious happened, but because we pre-installed software for you. There is a little package that has the UBOS staff in it, uh, which is this USB stick that helps us uh, administer. Uh, the UBOS box and a few stickers and then we have uh, instructions and we have an Ethernet cable and uh, in the next step uh, or the first step uh, we will unpack all of these packages um, and then start assembling uh, the UBOS box okay here we are uh, with all of the parts taken out of the packages and I put uh, them in roughly in the same place as uh, where they came from. So you have some idea uh, what that all is and where it comes from. So here we have the Raspberry Pi, which is just this board. Here we have the power supply. It comes uh, by default apparently with a British uh, uh, plug because the Raspberry Pi is produced in the UK, depending where you buy this. There's some other plugs here, uh, like a Euro plug and this is well, the uh, it's American version. and. This is the Australian version, I think, that you can uh, put on here, um, depending what you're, you need for your country. You just push this button here and it slides off and the other one can slide back on. Then over here, the Pi desktop has a lot of parts itself. Uh, it is this enclosure here, it has a lid. There is a, a little piece of rubber that comes in the package that's, I think, just packaging material, so you can throw this away. It has its own instructions. I don't think you will need them, but uh, just in case. It has its extra board. Uh, it has a battery for the real-time clock, a um, heat sink, and um, some mechanical uh, bolts to assemble the boards. And this uh, funny connector here. And then um, we have um, the UBOS staff and a few stickers. These two stickers here are just for you to have fun to put in your laptop or whatever it is. This sticker you only get to use once you have assembled your UBOS box. Uh, then it gets right up here. So you can you know, declare this UBOS box to be actually a UBOS box. And remember that this is the one that runs UBOS, just in case you have other Raspberry Pis in your house. There are people who do that. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is read the instructions. And um, opening the instructions here, it has a list of uh, the things that it contains. And then uh, we follow the assembly uh, instructions. So um, the first one would be to take the uh, sticker from the heatsink and put the heatsink on the Pi's main processor. So as shown on the desktop Pi instruction sheet or in this video. So what we will do is we take the heatsink which is this little thing here. It looks like a little bit like a comb. It has a big surface area, right? So the heat can be distributed uh, easily. And we take the Raspberry Pi and the primary, uh, the primary processor here of the Raspberry Pi is this piece right here. So what we will do is take the, uh, I'm actually not gonna do this right now, uh, but uh, we take the, the, the uh, uh, foil up here and push this on. Um, um, hard on this uh, processor so that when the processor gets hot because you're doing uh, you're making this poor Raspberry Pi work so really hard that it uh, keeps cool even if it's inside the uh, enclosure. Uh, the reason I'm not doing this right now is because I might have to re-record uh, the video and I don't want to put a new heatsink on a new Raspberry board every time I have to re-record this video. So um, let's just pretend it is, be, uh, it is up here. That'd be step number one. Then, step number two here, screw the large standoffs through the four holes in the pie board in the bottom of the enclosure. So where's the bottom of the enclosure? That would be, that would be this piece right here. So we find the four large standoffs. If you look in here, there's these uh, standoffs. One, two, three, four are large, and one, two, three, four are small. 
So we want those four large ones. Let's not lose some of the small screws here. Okay, and we put them here, right here, where, well, there's not much choice here. They only, uh, they only go into, actually, this is not, I'm not even following my instructions. The board, in the pie board, into the bottom, of course, we have to put the pie board into the enclosure here. I'm gonna take this heatsink away, you put it on, right? So I put this Pi board in here. You can see that it needs to come, the, the, the uh, USB ports here and the uh, Ethernet port need to be aligned. The holes here um, need to be aligned with these ones here. So we just put this in here. Might have to wiggle this a little. And uh, as it is aligned, okay, we, we put these uh, large standoffs into the holes out here. Like here and here and here and here. So and we tighten this. Reason to be tight, it doesn't have to be terribly tight, you're not gonna throw this this uh, board around. And next is we are going to put the battery into, according to the instructions, here I am, insert the battery into the battery holder. The battery holder is the bottom of this other board that came out of this box over here, not the Pi board, but this additional board. You can see there is a battery holder here and there's a battery. So we take this and put the battery in here. Okay, make sure it snaps well. That's the battery that will keep the clock of the Raspberry Pi running. Even if you disconnect the, um, the Pi from, the, from power, that's just like a PC. A PC does the same, same thing. Uh, most uh, little boards like Raspberry Pis don't, which is why they have an extra battery here. Now comes, um, comes the part where we are going to put the um, MSATA disk up here. So the battery is on one side. On the other side, we have this header here and these two um, um, standoffs there. And that's where the uh, MSATA drive goes. So the MSATA drive is right here. It's very small and cute. Still has a lot of storage. And the way to do this is that there's a short one and a long one of those connectors, right? You have to, of course, align it the correct way. So you put it in a little sideways like this. So don't try to put it in like this. Put it in like this and slide it in. It wiggles a little. Yeah, and then you see there's a little bit of a spring loading mechanism here so that when you put this down, it gets screwed in uh, up here. Okay, so we take um, the two little screws that came as part of this uh, pack with the standoffs in it and we put them through the holes here into those standoffs. I did this already, and uh, we can tighten them a little. Also, this is, does not need to be very tight. It just needs to prevent this uh, disc from falling out. We did not provide a screwdriver. You need a Phillips screwdriver for this, um, because if you are willing to assemble a kit, chances are you probably have a Phillips screwdriver. Um, okay, so we have this in here. We are done with this step, and now we want to slide, as it says here, the desktop Pi, uh, the, the board assembly, into the Pi's connector header. That sounds a little complicated, but basically all it means is we take this thing we just built with the battery and the disk, and we slide it in here where the uh, Pi is already sitting in an enclosure. So the, what needs to happen here is, and the, the way it works is that there's this big connector here that needs to sit on these pins right here. And then we have these two USB ports that need to come out over here. So what we wanna do is wiggle this in a little. Um, maybe the best way of um, doing this is aligning the pins. So there is, there's two rows of pins, right? And they're here and two rows of holes here. And these two need to, of course, align and make sure that you're not uh, you know, overlapping this somehow. They do have to. Uh, they do have to get in there. 
uh, at the same time, so they need to line up. This is, is this needs to be a straight a straight line here. Okay, and we push this gently down, and it turns out then as we do that, and we might have to wiggle this a little, then the USB ports here also align in the right place. Okay, wiggle this a little. Okay. And now we have uh, four more uh, standoffs, the small ones, the ones that have a, a um, screw slot up here. You might not need that, but we put them through here into the other standoffs so that this board gets fixed to the, um, to the um, uh, pie and well, on the standoffs uh, below. Okay. And here. And over here. You can use a screwdriver or you can use one of those nut things that is particularly good at tidying this. Um, it doesn't matter, you can just use your hands. This is all not very important that it is very tight. It just shouldn't uh, come loose. Okay, here we are. Now, comes the role of this very odd looking piece here. That's a bit of a kludge, okay? Uh, I'm not responsible for that. Uh, the uh, kludge comes because the Raspberry Pi has not really made it e uh, easy to connect a external disk or anything that doesn't go through the outside USB ports. And so these guys who built the uh, enclosure, element 14, came up with this little workaround by which this USB port here gets connected to the board up here with this connector. So you want to put this between this USB, um, small USB port and this large USB port here. Uh, it turns out that it doesn't actually fit anywhere else because you need both of them. So there's really only one position, which is the upper right one, where you put this in. And you might have to wiggle it a little so it does actually work. And it needs to go all the way in. Okay, now we are basically done with the assembly. The uh, only thing that's left to do is to put the uh, lid on. And the way the lid goes on is, um, how do I show this? Element 14, which is the brand name. You can actually take this out if you don't like that. Um, there's um, instructions online how to do that. Uh, and you can see there's also a, a cover on it that it doesn't scratch. But I'm gonna leave this on for the time being. So the way you want to put this on is that when you read element 14, you have this camera slot here, which we don't use in the front. And uh, the back is where we just, uh, where all the ports come out. So this is the way it goes. Another way of uh, looking at it is that this button here, which is the on off switch, um, this button here uh, needs to go onto this button down here. So it has to be here. Now you can close this all the way and just push it shut but I don't recommend you do that yet because it's a little hard to open again. Actually, it's quite hard to open it again. Um, it, it works, but you have to you know, pull a bit. And so uh, if you're not 100% certain that everything works as it is supposed to, just leave the uh, uh, box open for the time being until you have successfully booted and then you uh, can close it. Okay, and now we have an assembled box. That wasn't so hard, was it? And we are going to connect that to our network. And the way to do, well, and to, and to power. And the way we do that is ignore this, this remember the cool, uh, this cooling element here? We have that only in the board. I pretended I put this on already. So this is not here anymore, but you put it on, right? And so you take your ethernet cable and you take your US staff in just a second and you take power. So the ethernet, that's easy. It goes right here where it says LAN because that's the only place where it could possibly fit. Oops. So, so here you are, you connect this to your home router or wherever you have, um, you, you have uh, ethernet connection. Uh, the safest place is to put it in one of the spare ports of your uh, home router, that's one. Number two is you take the UBOS staff, which is just a little U USB device and put it in one of the other ports. Doesn't really matter which port. So here it is. 
and you only have to do this on the very first boot, uh, but on the first boot you do have to do it. And then uh, you, uh, after you've done that, you connect power. And you can see here on the back, there's really only one port left that can possibly uh, be power, PWR power. And you connect this to uh, your power outlet and connect this to power. Uh, probably the other way around. Here we are. And then you can, if you have the uh, lid on already, you just push the button here to start it. Or if you don't have the lid on yet, well, you can push harder or you can just push the button down here. Actually, can we see this here in the camera? The button down here, okay? And the uh, U-Bus box uh, should boot. Well, that will be in a different video, but if everything works, right, you take the, uh, the uh, cover here off and put your sticker on to you know, pat yourself on the back and say, this is now my U-Bus uh, box. I have turned the kit into something that actually works.